Okay, now we're ready for um, reference angles and reference triangles. We're going to start by looking at a definition for the six trig functions that you guys have seen before. And that's where we have some angle in standard position that has um, a point on the terminal side of the angle P uh, with the coordinates AB. And so I've drawn it here. Um, and so we have defined the six trig functions um, previously as the sine of this angle theta is um, equal to B over R, where R is the length of this to this point, um, and cosine is A over R, and the tangent is B over A, and so forth. So today we're going to look at how to define the six trick functions um, using reference angles. And so a reference angle is very simply where you would draw a, a angle in standard position, but then you drop a altitude, you drop a, a horizontal down. So I'm about to do that right here. And if I drop a, a line down that meets the x-axis at a right angle, right there, um, there's another angle that we can talk about in here called alpha. And this little alpha is the reference triangle, uh, the reference angle, and this is known as the reference um, triangle. And so what we can do is we can base our um, six trig functions off of this reference triangle and this reference angle alpha. Um, and so that frees us up to use what we have been using with the right triangle trig functions, so Katoa. So if we just have this angle here, right? We just have this triangle here um, and this angle alpha. Then we know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and we can use this. Tangent is opposite over adjacent to do that. Um, the adjustment we have to make because um, the sine, cosine, tangent of alpha um, may be different from theta is to realize what quadrant we're in. So let's just recall real quick the quadrants. Um, this is our x-axis. This is our y-axis. And so this is quadrant 1, and this is quadrant 2, this is 3, and this is 4. Okay, we just have to pay attention to what quadrant we're in. And that tells us what the sine of um, sine, cosine, tangent will be. Um, X and Y in quadrant 1, uh, a point here would have a positive X and a positive Y coordinate. A point in quadrant 2 would have a negative X and a positive Y coordinate. A point in quadrant 3 would have a negative X and a negative Y. And a point in quadrant 4 would have a positive X coordinate and a negative Y coordinate. Okay, we're just going to keep this in mind. I'm going to come back and talk about this as we go, as it comes up. But this, together, this is what we're going to be heading into. First, let's just go through a few examples, and we'll keep relating this to reference triangles as we go. Um, the first thing I think we have, oh, let me just define what a reference angle is um, in words. So a reference angle, we'll write this down. Okay. A reference angle is it is the acute angle now remember acute means between 0 and 90 degrees, the acute angle alpha, so it's this alpha right here, um, it's always positive, it's always positive, between the terminal side of the angle theta. So in this picture, see, here's theta, this purple side, this is the terminal side of the angle, and this, um, we, this is our horizontal, and this little angle alpha is the reference angle. It's, so it's formed between the terminal side of the angle theta and the horizontal, or x, Okay, that in words is what the reference angle is. 
Okay, now we're going to go through a few examples, and we'll keep referring to this throughout the video. Um, the first example says, find the exact values. That means not um, approximate, not in your calculator to the round to the tenths, but with the square root in it, um, or just as a fraction. Find the exact values of the six trig functions if the terminal side of an angle X contains the point negative 5, negative 12. So we're going to step our way into reference triangles. This is our first one, first example. Um, it says that the point P is negative 5, negative 12. Okay, so here is our x, y axis. So if they don't have one, you just draw your own. And so then you go find this point. This has got a negative x and a negative y, so this is going to be in quadrant 3 down here. So I'm just estimating, let's see, let's go out negative 5 and down negative 12, and let's say this, this is the point. So this would be right here, the terminal side of, this is the angle, theta, right there. Okay, so, what we have to find are the six trig functions. We have to find the sine, the cosine, the tangent, um, the cosecant, the secant, and the cotangent of this angle, theta. All right, so, we know that this point is negative 5, negative 12. What we're going to do is we're going to use a reference um, triangle and a reference angle. Um, without even knowing what these angles are, we're going to use this triangle right here to help us figure out what this is. Now, if we have some triangle, the values are always positive. So what we have to do when we're using this for theta instead of just the triangle is to adjust for the for the uh, whether it's positive or negative, depending on the quadrant. So we're in quadrant three, and so this tells us right here that this is gonna be negative. So let us just draw our little triangle here, draw a, a line from the point to the um, x-axis, and this is gonna be our little um, triangle. We don't even know what alpha is, but it doesn't matter. We're gonna be able to figure this out. Negative five is the x, so this is the negative five. We went left five, and then we went down 12, so this is negative 12. Now this value here is always positive. This is our R, this is always positive. So let's um, use the Pythagorean theorem to figure this out. So we'd say negative five squared, I'm gonna call that R, um, R squared, right? Or C squared, whatever you wanna call this, this side squared, is negative five squared plus negative 12 squared. So R squared is gonna be 25, plus 144, r squared is 169, so r is the square root of 169, which is 13. So this side right here is 13. Now we can just simply use, um, we can just simply use uh, the Sokotoa if we want to from here on out with this little triangle. So we would say, if we look at this out, if the values we're calculating are for theta, but we can base it off of this alpha because we've adjusted for the negative and the positives. So if we say, what is the sine of theta? We can just look at this triangle and say, well, sine is opposite over hypotenuse or negative 12 over 13. Um, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse or negative five over 13. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, or negative 12 over negative 5, which is going to be a positive 12 over 5, because a negative over a negative is a positive. Now, I'm going to be introducing the fundamental, some of the fundamental identities as we go, and I've mentioned this before. I figure out this one, this one, and this one, and then I just use an identity to find these. So... Here's the identity, one of some of the fundamental identities that I want to remind you of. Um, the sine of x is equal to 1 over the cosecant of x and vice versa. The cosecant of x is equal to 1 over the sine of x. So if I want to find the cosecant of theta, I can just take the reciprocal of this. This is going to be negative 13 over 12. Um, also, the secant... The cosecant, the cosine of x is 1 over the secant of x, and vice versa. The secant of x is 1 over the cosine of x, 
And so this is, of course, the stipulation we have to make is where these are defined. So if we're dividing by zero, then they're, then they're not defined. Um, the secant of theta is going to be the reciprocal of this negative 13 over 5. Um, and then the cotangent and tangent are reciprocals of each other. The tangent of x <coughs> is 1 over the cotangent of x. And the cotangent of x is 1 over the tangent of x. And so um, I find this, and then I take the reciprocal. The reciprocal of 12 over 5 is 5 over 12. And that's how we can find the six trig functions for this angle theta. Okay, I'm going to do the next, next examples, not quite as slowly, uh, because I've explained this right here. So, let's go through to the next one. The next one is a little bit different. It doesn't give us a point. It gives us a trig function. It says find the other five. So, it goes like this. It says find the exact values of the other five trig functions if the terminal side of the angle X of the term... Um, now, what is this not written right? Find the exact values of the other five trig functions um, given that the cosine of x is negative 25 over 24 and x is in quadrant 4. So, let us do this one. Number 2 goes like this. So, I'll leave that one. so it says we've got to find the exact values of the other five trig functions. Given that um, the cosecant of x is equal to negative 25 over 24, and x is in quadrant 4, and the angle x is in quadrant 4. Okay, that's what we have to go on. Draw yourself an x-y axis. This is um, critical. You need to get in this habit. Draw yourself a little x-y axis. So here we go. Um, quadrant 4 is where we're at. So draw an angle in quadrant 4. So here we go. Here's an initial side, okay? And then here is the terminal side. It's somewhere, this is angle X, it's somewhere in quadrant 4. Okay. Now, what we know is this information. What I'm going to do is draw myself a reference triangle so I can can figure this out. So right here, I'm going to drop a horizontal down and make myself a little right angle there. Okay, now, now I'm going to come over here and deal with what we have going on here. Um, the cosecant of x is this. That means that the sine of x is its reciprocal, negative 24 over 25. Okay, now, I'm going to look at my little triangle here and say sine is equal to, and I'm going to use my reference triangle, the sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that means, I need a little room here, um, opposite is 24, hypotenuse is 25, and I have to decide where this negative goes. The, the hypotenuse is never negative, and so that means that the sine is negative 24. That should make some sense to me because I'm in quadrant four. And if you think of a point in quadrant four, the X is positive, but the Y is negative. And so I went down and that's the negative. So that's how I label that. Now I use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what this, this distance here is. So we'll say, I'll just call this A for now. I'll say A squared plus negative 24 squared is 25 squared. And I don't know these off the top of my head, so I think I did this earlier. Um, I didn't, um, A squared is going to be 25 squared minus um, negative 24 squared, and what I get there is 49, and so A is 7. Um, will A be positive or negative? A will be positive because we're in quadrant 4 and we went to the right, okay? So these are the numbers I need. Now I can find all the trig functions really quickly. I know what sine is. Let's go ahead and they gave us cosecant. I'll just write this down again. It's the reciprocal. Okay. Then what is the cosine of x? Well, the cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse 7 over 25. That means that the secant is the reciprocal 25 over 7. And then the tangent of x is sine over cosine, that's another um, identity we'll see, or simply opposite 
I mean adjacent, I'm sorry, opposite over adjacent or um, sine over cosine is another way to think of that, 24 over 7. The cotangent is going to be um, flip-flopped, uh, the reciprocal. The cotangent is going to be negative 7 over 24. And so that's how we can get those, um, those trig functions. So you can see, once you have that triangle, it's really, really quick to find the others. So let me just double check, make sure I'm giving you, I agree with my answers. I said cosine 7 over 25, tangent negative 24 over 7, secant 25 over 7, cotangent negative 7 over 24. Okay, yep, I'm okay with that. Here is the, another example. Um, what if they say find all six um, or the other five trig functions given that the sine of x is 4 over 5 and it's in quadrant 2. So let's do that. The sine of x Okey-dokey. The sine of x is 4 over 5, so this is number 3. The sine of x is 4 over 5, and um, x is in quadrant 2. All right, draw yourself a little xy axis, and so here we go. Draw yourself an angle whose terminal side is in quadrant 2. So here's quadrant two, and here's the initial side, here's the terminal side, and so this is angle X. Now let's draw a reference triangle. Drop an altitude down to the horizontal axis, and we can begin to talk about this angle. So I'm gonna drop a line down that meets at the X axis at a right angle, and then I'm gonna start to label what I can figure out. Now I'm in quadrant two. Okay. So in quadrant two, we go left and up to get to some point there. That means my x is going to be negative and my y is going to be positive. That's what I know. So let's look at our little reference angle alpha. Okay, so um, we can work off of alpha now that we've adjusted for the quadrant and the signs. And so the sign is 4 over 5 or opposite 4 over hypotenuse. Five. And we can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out this value, and we already have adjusted for the sine because it's in quadrant two. So we could say um, a squared plus four squared is five squared, or a squared is 16, I mean plus 16 is 25, or a squared is nine, or a is three. Okay, that's this. Now we say, hey, should it be positive or negative? We're in quadrant two, we went left. This should be a negative three. Once we have that, we can get the values out really quickly. We already know sine, so that means cosecant is its reciprocal, five over four. Um, let's do cosine. Cosine of x is adjacent over hypotenuse, negative three-fifths. Then the secant is its reciprocal, negative five-thirds. The tangent is opposite over um, adjacent, so it's negative four-thirds. And the cotangent is adjacent over um, opposite, or the reciprocal of tangent. You can think of it that way. So before we move on, I just wanna make sure I agree with my answers. I got that the cosine is negative three-fifths, the tangent is negative four-thirds, the cotangent is negative three-fourths. The secant is negative five-thirds. Okay, so I, I'm agreeing with all that. Um, I'm starting to check my answers before I move on from my video so that y'all don't have to email me later saying, hey, this is wrong. So um, let me just see. There's a couple of things I want to point out. Um, I want us to take note of a few things. I want us to notice that if you look back in the examples, you will see the first three examples that we did you will see that if an angle is in quadrant one, the X and the Y are both positive in quadrant one, but you're also gonna find that that means that the cosine 
is positive and the sine is also positive in quadrant one because we're going to associate cosine with the x with the x coordinate and sine with the y coordinate so maybe um i'm gonna just move this little x here i'm just this really you take the cosine always of an angle but i'm gonna leave that blank for now just because i don't want you confusing the x because lots of times we talk about that being the positive um uh coordinate so Cosine, we're going to associate, associate the cosine of some angle with the x coordinate. You can think of it this way. And we're going to associate the sine of some angle with the y coordinate. And what I mean by that is with the x movement is what you associate cosine with and the y movement is what you associate sine with so right here um to get to a point here we would go right positive up positive um cosine in quadrant two is negative because we had to go left but the sine in quadrant two is positive because we go up in quadrant three x coordinate y coordinate we went left down or negative negative therefore the cosine is negative and the sine is negative here. Over here, quadrant four, uh, we went right, so the cosine is positive. We go down, so the sine is negative. Um, these are things you need to kind of get in your head, but you don't have to like memorize it from scratch. You can just associate cosine with your x coordinate, y, sine with your y coordinate, you can figure that out. Now the tangent is the division of the, co of the sine over the cosine. So if this is a positive number divided by a positive number, then the tangent is also going to be positive. Down here, quadrant three. So this is quadrant one. This is quadrant three. And quadrant three. The division of a negative over a negative makes another positive. So here, the tangent is also positive. So here, the tangent is positive. Here, the tangent is positive. So if this symbol is bothering you, you can think of, I can just do positive, negative. Here, cosine is negative, sine is positive. Here, cosine is negative, sine is negative. Here, cosine is positive, sine is negative. Positive, negative, 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 positive, positive, positive. Okay. So the tangent is positive here, and the tangent is positive here. Because positive over positive, positive over positive. Um, in quadrant two, Quadrant two and quadrant four, uh, we're dividing a positive and a negative number, so the tangent is going to be negative here. In quadrant four, we're dividing a positive and a negative, so the tangent is also negative here in quadrant four. Um, this is a little way people memorize this. All students take, I've heard it calculus, I've heard it crack. Um, whatever you guys want to say all students take calculus we'll do that a stands for all positive that means sine cosine and tangent are all positive in quadrant one s means that the sine is positive t means that the tangent is positive in quadrant three c means that the cosine is positive in quadrant four um if this helps you memorize this kind of um these signs then this is a, a memorization tactic that people use Okay, I'm going to stop this and then we're going to go on to learn about um, some special triangles that will become really, really important for us shortly.